All right, parents, so here we are at the end of what for many people is the end of day one of being a homeschooler, whether you wanted to or not. Um, I have a background in education, so this is sort of exciting for me, sort of exciting for my kids, it was sort of a letdown once they actually had to do work, especially my seven-year-old. I have a second grader and a kindergartner, and my kindergartner thinks this is awesome. My second grader has a mixed opinion. Um, but I wanted to jump online and share some of the things that we've been doing um, to sort of directly address what is going on in the world in a way that a second grader and a kindergartner can deal with. Um, because my background is in uh, theater education. I taught elementary school drama at a private school for nine years. Um, and then also English education um, and I teach at the community college <laughs> at that level. So, um, I've kind of been all over the place, but storytelling is really important to me and is an important way that we as people process, um, issues in the world. So, um, I did the plan ahead thing and ordered like a spelling workbook and sight words and stuff, but I didn't really think I had to lesson plans because that's not what I normally do or have to do. Um, but then here we are. So um, what I did do was reach out to my friends on Facebook, many of whom are in the theater or in teaching, and um, get some opinions from them about um, books or stories or movies that might be helpful. Um, unfortunately, most of those are not things that I had on hand. So I decided to um, tackle the issue with what I did have. Um, and so we started with the word adaptation. What does it mean to adapt uh, to new circumstances? And then the books that I happen, I'm really good at just like making things up because that's kind of a theater skill too. So I grabbed books that I found on our bookshelf that seemed to have something to do with adaptation and then I put together the lesson plan as we went. So we read um, the story of Babar, or Babar, um, which many of us probably know from our childhood, and then also the story of Ferdinand, which um, was even from well before my childhood, which we probably both were, but anyhow, um, so these two stories had issues with adaptation. So for those parents who are not teachers and not used to reading to discuss, um, what I did is we read especially... Babar is I had my kids stop and um, make predictions. So um, as Babar gets to the city, for instance, you can ask things like, does Babar belong in the city? Do you think he's ever been to a city before? Is he used to the city? What do you think will happen? Right? And even if they know the story, um, guiding them to think in different ways. Right? Um, kids really like the word weird which isn't the best way to describe things because it's not specific. When I taught elementary school, I would always tell my kids they couldn't use that word because it just means different than what I'm used to. But um, as a starting point, uh, it can be helpful. And again, my kids are five and seven, so their vocabulary is a little bit limited. Um, so I would ask them something like, is it weird that he's wearing a suit? Or is that a regular thing for an elephant to do? Um, and try to get away from that word weird going forward, but marking it as not what we expect um, or not what we're used to. Um, but anyway, so we talked about Babar. Babar adapts to living in the city, but then at the end, Babar comes back home to the forest and he's elected king. Um, there's a little slightly weird thing about he marries his cousin, which, you know, my kids were immediately like, but... You can deal with that separately <laughs> or skip that word if your kids aren't readers yet. Um, so anyway, so we talked about Babar. And then a little later in the day, we read the story of Ferdinand. And my kids had actually, they've heard this before, but they didn't remember it. They've seen the movie and they remembered that. But um, my son remembered it from the girl's point of view as opposed to Ferdinand's. So it was a slightly different story in his head. But um, we read Ferdinand. And of course, Ferdinand, if you don't know, is a little bit different. It's about a bull um, who's a very gentle, sweet bull who just likes to sit and um, 
in the shade of his tree up here. But it just so happens that when the bullfighters come looking for their next bull, oh, they see him stomping around. I need the story to find out why. Um, and decide he'd be great in the ring. And they're so excited. But then when he gets there, right, they're all like ready to fight the bull. Um, when Ferdinand gets there, he does not adapt. Right, he just sits there. Um, and unfortunately, the matador and all the pokers who have very specific Spanish names, um, they don't adapt either. They keep trying to do what they usually do and it doesn't work. And so he gets to go home, back to his tree in the field. Right, so those are our two stories. And again, you're sort of asking questions. What do you notice? What do you think will happen? Um, you can always start with sort of open-ended questions if you're not sure what to ask. Um, but if you start with that vocabulary word of adapt, what does it mean to adapt? Then um, that gives you something to kind of go back to and something for them to aim for. So then we made a Venn diagram. And my older one knew what this was. My little one didn't. So I had my older one explain to my little one um, what we were doing. So Babar's on this side, Ferdinand's on that side. And then um, I served as scribe because my seven-year-old was kind of burnt out on this idea of like actually having to do school at this point. Um, but he gave lots of ideas verbally. If I had made him try and write too, he wouldn't have been into that. If your kids want to write or they're um, a little older and have an easier time writing, then absolutely you can let them write. You see the giant word C that my kindergartner wanted to write because he knew how to spell that one. Um, but so they came up with things. Again, I kind of prodded them with adaptation as they ran out of their own things to start with. But they have things like um, learned to talk like humans, uh, became king, lived with humans for two years, liked humans, mother died, adopted by the old lady, adapts to human things. So this is where my kindergartner was confused. He didn't realize that adopt and adapt were two different words. So we talked about that. Uh, likes to be with his friends. Ferdinand likes to be alone. Got stung by a bee. Just see humans. Uh, didn't like humans. Got sent to a fight. Likes flowers. Doesn't adapt. Stays the same. So that you can see I kind of prodded the, with the question of does he adapt? Do they adapt? And then in the middle, they're both animals, right? Both got to experience humans, both sad, one at the beginning, one at the end, um, or nearly the end, not the end, the middle. Uh, live in the wild with lots of trees, go to a city, go back home. Okay, so comparing and contrasting these stories was where we started. The questions in orange are questions we're going to talk about tomorrow. So as I was reading and thinking about adaptation, um, what I want to talk about with them next is um, the fact that sometimes we have to adapt and sometimes it's good to adapt, but there are some things that we don't need to adapt about ourselves or what we do or what we believe. Um, so the questions are, what are some reasons to adapt and what are some reasons not to adapt? So we'll answer those. I kind of put this one by Fabar because he does adapt and is happy with that and it goes well. Well, it's kind of a colonialist message. Um, anyhow, uh, and this one's sort of by Ferdinand because that's what happens in Ferdinand. He does not adapt, right? Um, and so now we can talk about things like, um, Babar was interested in learning more about people, right? He wanted to, to know and to get close and to try things. Um, and so if we're interested in learning something new, then we might want to adapt, um, that the people were kind to him. Um, no one was forcing him to do it. Um, and we can also talk about our situation a little bit now, right? So sometimes we have to adapt. So my kids might bring up that he didn't have a mom, right? And he was adopted by the old lady. So he needed to live someplace else. That's where he lived. Okay, we, we need to live a little differently. So we're staying at home now. Um, Ferdinand didn't adapt because they wanted him to do something dangerous and mean and scary. And we don't have to adapt to those things, 
right? We don't have to, if we're, our values and our morals, we don't need to adapt. Um, so that's important too, in understanding that there are some things that are going to change, hopefully temporarily, just like in these stories, conveniently, um, but there are some things that are not gonna change, right? In our family, we're, we're still gonna love each other, we're still going to help each other, we're still going to be kind to each other, um, we're still gonna learn things at school, but we're just gonna do them in a different way. So some things we're not gonna change, but some things are gonna change. And then the piece that we'll add to this after they make some lists that are general, that are gonna be more about the stories that they read is then I'll guide them specifically to make some predictions or plans for our family. So in our family, what are some things that have adapted or that we are going to adapt or we should adapt? And then what are some things that are we're not going to adapt, that we're not going to change? Um, so in this way, um, we can have a conversation that's kid-friendly, it's not about a scary virus, um, and we're going to have to talk about any of those things. It's just about what our family is going to do and what the plan is and how we can feel safe doing it. So um, that's my plan so far, <laughs> um, and I will keep you updated. I'm also planning on having my older son especially work on the book um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, which admittedly I have not read since probably I was in second grade, um, but it's a pretty good reading level for him, and it's also about a family of animals who have to adapt um, and move underground for their safety, um, and they have adventures along the way and things, but um, again, we can kind of talk tangentially about what's happening in the world and um, in our home because it's a big change for kids. Um, and especially my kids, and I think a lot of kids these days are used to having a lot of choice and having things the way li they like it and, and comfortable. And so this is very different um, to have a lot of choices closed off and to be hearing a solid nope, um, there's no compromise on this, there's no other option. Um, this is just what it is. So hopefully that helps someone. And um, if not, then good luck finding something that does work for you.